And welcome back. You know, each Friday, Gary Dick of Inside Indiana Business joins us with the big business stories of the week. And one of those was announced just this morning. Yeah. IPL announcing their intention to stop burning coal at the uh, plant there and transition to natural gas. So I guess I want to ask you, Gary, why they're doing it. What's it going to mean? Well, a couple of reasons, uh, Chris. One, uh, EPA, strict EPA re uh, uh, regulations on emissions coming from existing uh, coal-fired plants. That's a response to that, certainly. Talked to a few business folks this morning. A bit surprised that uh, that IPL is doing this to phase out coal completely in uh, in 20 by 2017 uh, at that major plant on the south side, but at the same time, not surprising because of these these uh, stipulations. Uh, IPL and AES have invested a lot of money in clean coal technology, so they're moving away from that now, going with natural gas, a lot cheaper uh, right now, and very plentiful fracking and those types of things puts a lot of that uh, natural gas uh, available. In 2017, IPL says it will go from in 20, uh, 2007, it was 70, around 70 percent coal, down to 44 percent here in the next three years. So really getting away from that uh, going forward. All right, very interesting stuff. And we're going to switch to the State Fair. Yep. We're wrapping up this weekend already, yep. hard to believe, and we're going to learn about attendance numbers for the fair like we yep. always do. But we're really wondering about attendance at a specific feature, a new one at the we fair this year. We were talking about that a minute. Yeah. Beer and wine. Yes. A lot of people were excited about that. A big change at the fair for the first time in more than 60 years, selling beer and wine during uh, the fair. Early indications as to the impact. I talked with fair officials yesterday. They say through the first 13 days of the fair, more than 37,000 people had been through that beer and wine exhibition. They say that's a bit above uh, their expectations. Earlier, they said $200,000 they might make off this uh, exhibition. They're kind of backing off that, don't know where it is. But with those numbers, it should certainly reach that, perhaps, or perhaps surpass it. The other thing about this, Chris, I think people poo-pooed it when they talked about it being a, an educational deal. I've talked to some of the breweries, and they say they're educating Hoosiers on craft beer, people who drink the normal, the Bud Light, Miller Light, those types of things, learning a lot more about craft beer, and that could be good for business here all right, in Indiana. I, I'm all for it. I, me too, yeah. <laughs> all right, well, late last week, a federal judge ruled that the NCAA's ban on paying players for use of their names, their images, the likenesses in video games and TV broadcasts violates antitrust law, so we don't know I guess what's it going to mean for the future of college sports? Yeah, it's really up in the air. It was the Ed O'Bannon case filed five years ago. The former UCLA player had uh, filed that lawsuit. The judge uh, essentially siding with O'Bannon, allowing at the end of the day uh, schools to establish uh, uh, trust funds of up to $5,000 per year uh, for players to help uh, pay for the, uh, the images and the use of their images and those types of things. But Bose McKinney and Evans uh, attorney uh, Gary uh, Roberts, who was on our show this week, and said really the NCAA didn't fare that badly. However, he says in the future, it's all bets off in terms of student athletes in the NCAA. All right. It's a lot of good stuff. Uh, on the one hand, there are a lot of people who think that the small group of elite football and basketball players are being exploited mm -hmm. uh, and that there's now a lot of pressure to, to change that. But at the same time, we've got almost 400,000 student athletes that the system works very w good for. Gary Roberts, uh, Chris says, in his opinion, this just takes that gap of the halves, the big time colleges and the smaller colleges, makes that gap that much wider. NCAA, based here in Indianapolis, certainly under fire. Okay, jumped in a little too soon That's there, okay. Gary, but thanks so much. And you can watch Inside Indiana Business with Gary Dick this Sunday morning. It's at 11 o'clock, of course, right here on Channel 13. Always